Hi guys, this is Lydia the Lifestyle Coach and we are ending eating disorders using nothing but your brain. And here is what we are going to do today. This is the next part of our series of if you think it's this, this is what you need to know. If you haven't seen the intro video, that would be a great one to check out after you watch this one and feel free to say hello and comment and hearts and likes and all the things. It's amazing to have you guys here and this is an incredible community that we have. Hi guys, hi, so fun to see you on here. All right, so what we're really doing in this series is we're breaking down all of the different myths out there, all of the different methods and strategies, you know, that are floating everywhere about how to end an eating disorder because it's just this whole sea of really bad information. And so what we're doing here is really straightening that out because a lot of those things makes it make it worse. And so this is about the good and the bad and the effective and the not effective in all the different treatments out there for eating disorders. So we're going to talk about a really basic one today that's actually a very natural thing that our brains and our bodies do. And it's really important to understand that. And this is about, if you think it's about focusing on the positive, then here are the things that you really need to know. Because it's hard to have an eating disorder. It's awful. It's awful to feel out of integrity. It's awful to see what's happening to your health. It's awful to feel out of control. Like all of that is really difficult. And the loop that we get caught in is we feel so awful telling ourselves, we're never going to do this again. This is the last time. And it feels bad. And then it feels a little bit better when we say that we're not doing it again. And then we actually end up softening what happened. We end up saying, oh, well, that was just so weird. And it was because of the circumstance. and That's not going to happen again. And it's a natural thing for our brains to go into relieving that cognitive dissonance for us to feel better about the bad thing that we did. And the problem is, is that it feels like the problem is over because, well, we did that thing and we made up for it. And now we're never going to do it again. And then it feels like it's done. But that's a false feeling because then when it happens again, it feels even worse because we just told ourselves that we're never going to do it again. So there's a good reason that we do this. There's a good reason that we soften what's happening. There's a good reason that we try to stay positive, focus on what's going well. That is all a very natural thing that our brains do to protect ourselves. Like you have to emotionally survive because the thing about this habit and the thing about this cycle is that it goes on and on and on and it keeps on getting worse. It is not uncommon. Like the hundreds and hundreds of people that we have freed all over the world from their eating disorders, a lot of them, it had been 40, 50, or 60 years that they've been struggling with this every single time thinking that it was going to get better. But that doesn't mean that it's getting better. It's just the thing that your brain does to protect you from the immediate horrible feelings of that it happened again. And our body and brain have those defense mechanisms. It's any time like when you have a physical or an emotional trauma, your body does things to try to manage that. Like if you think about breaking your leg, like you think about like, oh man, that would be so horribly painful. But in reality, when it actually happens, when you actually break your leg, it hurts for a minute. And then your body does all sorts of things and sends all sorts of chemicals so it doesn't hurt as bad, so it numbs it out when something really horrible happens to you, like the thought of somebody close to you dying. I mean, that the thought of that feels awful, but when that actually happens, your brain has all sorts of things to numb you out, to keep you in a place where you can deal, to really just sort of cover up what's happening because it's about that immediate survival. And so... The problem is, is that focusing on that positivity can have good benefits, like it keeps us alive. A lot of times with an eating disorder, focusing on that positivity, if we really looked at the reality of what was happening all day, every day, then a lot of us wouldn't survive. A lot of us wouldn't choose to live. And a lot of times that positivity and that hope and that tomorrow is going to be better does keep us surviving. But the problem is, is that surviving on that thread of hope day after day for 40 years is not living because life keeps on getting worse and worse because the positivity never fixes our problem. It just keeps it going. It keeps us going, but it also keeps the cycle going. Every time that we loop back around, 
to another binge, to another session of overeating, to another stressful situation that then we think that, oh, well, it's the stress that causes this, and now wouldn't it be better to eat than be this stressed? Every time that we loop back around, that cycle started over again with a, you know what, tomorrow's going to be better. You know, today I'm going to eat clean. You know, that is totally over. And it's actually the positivity and the hope that turns into part of the eating disorder cycle. And so we go into this place of denial. We soften what's happening. We say, oh, well, it wasn't that bad, or I'm going to make up for it. Or even in the very act of binging, we say, well, okay, I'm binging, but tomorrow's going to be different, and I'm going to be eating clean for a whole month, and so I might as well have what I want tonight, and I'm going to make up for it tomorrow, and I'm going to do an extra long workout. It's in the very moment that we're binging that that hope and those promises are continuing the binge the night before. So we soften what happens when we're doing it and after we did it, and then we start ignoring what really happened. And you start having this feeling of it didn't really happen because it doesn't feel like you. You wake up the next morning feeling horrible from your binge, but full of resolve and full of hope and full of positivity and dedicated to a new day. And it's kind of like it never really happened. You're like, you know what? Like, that was so weird. Like, that just felt totally not me. It felt so out of control. Like, it's almost like it didn't happen. And why worry about it? Because it's never going to happen again. And that's like the 50,000th time that that's happened. Or when we think about what happened, when we think about what truly happened, when we think about what we felt and the promises that we broke and what we actually ate and what it's actually doing to our health and now we're pre-diabetic and we just binged on sugar and all of the health consequences of that, then the negative feelings of that, like the reality of what's happening, we have this block that just says, well, I don't want to think about that. When we think of where we're actually on track, when we think of, well, we gained 20 pounds in the last six months, so that means that I'm going to be 40 pounds heavier in the coming year. When we even approach that, we say, I don't want to think about it. And it's so frustrating because we're ignoring what's happening. We're feeling like, oh, it didn't even really happen. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about what happened. I don't want to think about what's going to happen. I'm just going to stay in this moment of positivity right now. And then it hits us all at once when we hit these moments of frustration of you tried so hard all day. You did everything perfectly. You ate totally clean. You did your perfect workout. You completely eliminated all the stress. You stayed away from all of your triggers. I'm going to put that in quotes because we'll do another video about that in the day. And then you go home and you undo everything and worse. And all of your family's in bed and you're up late at night just uncontrollably eating things out of the cupboard or going out and getting fast food and you know hiding it in the dumpster on the way home so that your family doesn't wonder why there are McDonald's bags in the trash can. And it's the frustration of working so hard and the exact opposite is happening. It's like putting all of your energy into a relationship and it just keeps on getting worse and worse. The more love you give, the more you guys fall apart putting all of your energy into your career. And instead of getting a raise, you're getting a pay cut. Like the more that you try to fix this, the worse that it gets. And it's incredibly frustrating putting all of your energy into losing weight, all of your energy into doing everything that you need to, to lose those 20 pounds. And you're 20 pounds heavier after six months. So the problem with staying positive and just focusing on the positive is that it actually distracts us from the real issue of what's going on. A disordered pattern with eating is literally a million dollar problem. And I don't mean just like it kills us and your life is worth way more than that. And that's certainly a factor. But when we really boil it down to like the dollars and cents, like it is a million dollar program, a problem. Like, $25,000 a year is simple. That's easy to spend on an eating disorder. It just keeps on taking, and we tend to numb that as well. 
And then when you do that over 40 years, that's a million dollars. It's $13 a day on extra food, extra groceries that you're eating out of the cupboard. It's $400 a month on different diets and therapy and hypnosis and other things that, you know, we just keep trying, hoping that this is going to be the thing. It's $5,000 a year on two new wardrobes because you have to buy things for, you know, warm weather and cold weather and you have to get everything in a bigger size. It's $400 a month just trying to feel better with supplements to try to feel better from binging or, you know, well, oh, it's not the food. I have to balance my hormones or I need to be on medications or, you know, I have to have doctor's visits. It's $5,000 a year on just extra shopping and missed opportunities, not getting a raise, you know, going out and, you know, doing shopping online or going out to do some retail therapy just to try to distract ourselves or feel better. I mean, everyone has that million dollars, you know, come through their life for whatever amount that is, right? But that's a really average thing in 40 years to have a million dollars come through your life. But people that don't have this issue with food, they spend it on vacations and they spend it on paying off their house and they spend it on a down payment instead of literally paying to put extra weight on their body, literally paying into giving themselves health issues or literally throwing it down the toilet. And this is all because we're just focusing on the positive and we're just keeping there from day to day and it's going to be different tomorrow because we're softening what's happening. And here's the other issue with that. Besides focusing on the positive, keeping us in this same cycle, it tricks us into thinking that instead of this being a million dollar problem, instead of this really facing the reality of what this is taking from our lives, because we're softening it, we treat it like it's not a big deal. Like, oh, we just probably need a little something that will help it click. You know, we treat it like it can be cured with, oh, probably just some more podcasts and YouTube videos and a $6 ebook. That's what's going to cure my problem. But the thing is, is that especially with bulimia, instant death can happen at any time. We keep on saying this will get better, but every time that we purge, there's a chance that our heart is going to stop. And we say, oh, a $6 ebook is probably the answer because the worse that it gets, the more that we have to soften it just to get through day to day. So it's like you guys might have heard me talk about the seatbelt analogy, right? It's like you put your kids in the car, you don't put on their seatbelts, and you don't want to think about what would happen if you crashed. That's, that's a horrible feeling. That doesn't feel good. So you don't want to think about it. But it doesn't change the consequences of what happens if you do and the direction and the risk that you're taking. And we say, oh, it's just one, one car ride. But we know the consequences is that it doesn't matter how much we don't want to think about how horrible it would be to have our children die because we didn't strap them in. The reality is, is that instant death can happen with them if we don't put their seatbelts on and we take off in the car. And we're taking that same risk with our lives every day because we don't want to think about it. No, 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 it's, it's going to be better today. No, 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 I made a promise yesterday. How many years has that been going on? So this is what has to happen. If you think that it's about staying positive, it's totally understandable that your brain and your body is doing it. But what you have to know is that that positivity is part of what keeps you in that cycle. And that positivity is part of what softens the real issue. So you don't come face to face with what's really going on. And so you never do what you need to to fix this. The solution is that you've got to treat a million dollar problem as a million dollar problem with the real consequences of instant death and 40 years or an entire life wasted. We have to stop treating it like it's no big deal. No one treats cancer like, oh man, you know what? I just need to watch some more YouTube videos because I just need to stay positive and I'm sure that we're going to fix this. A few more YouTube videos and you know what? And it's free. And so nobody treats cancer that way because it's in our mentality of how serious that is. But the thing is, is that an eating disorder is a lot more expensive than cancer and can be just as deadly. It just drags things out longer or unless it's the instant death and it stops your heart instantly. So what has to happen is to be done with this, we've got to stop numbing the problem and 
softening what's happening and we have to start getting real, really looking at what's happening here because it will change the approach that we take. And we, you've got to have support in the process because if you're really looking at what's happening and then you're diving into something that is going to only make your problem worse, then like we cannot keep on taking failures. Like it's this balance of having the hope that yes, we're going to get better, but being real about what the problem truly is. And so what happens if you don't look at it? What happens if you don't look at what's truly going on? It's all the same things that have been going on. It's still all the same money and health and life and all of that is still being effective. So first, you've got to get real about what is actually happening. Second, you've got to have the support to really know that you're on track to do what you need to do that's going to end this all the way. Because this is you've got to get in, you've got to get real, and you've got to get done. And if you want help and support in doing that, that's why we have free sessions available to you guys. You can have one free breakthrough session with our team. We do this as a service to help you to get the foundation of freedom so you can know that you're on the right track. And we will show you what to do if we can help you or we'll tell you where we need to direct you. Um, but either way, it's really about getting that clarity and that foundation first. So you can go to lifewithlydia.com slash apply. Again, that's lifewithlydia.com slash apply for a free session to help you with the first step of this because getting real with this is so important. So there's the next part of our series. And if you think it's this, this is what you need to know. This is what you guys need to know about the idea of, okay, well, I just need to focus on the positive. And this is Lydia, the Lifestyle Coach, signing off. Bye, guys.